The Philippine Nurses Association of Nevada now brings you Philippine NARS, news and features about the Filipino-American nursing community and beyond. And now, here's your host, Doris Bauer. Well, good evening, Philippine NARS listeners and viewers. Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat at maligayang Pasko po sa inyo. Merry Christmas to all of you. We hope that as you are winding down on this beautiful Christmas day, you all got your Christmas presents and Christmas wishes. Well, you probably have noticed that Philippine NARS has been running some repeat episodes in the last few weeks, and I do apologize for that. It seems that our full-time jobs have gotten the best of us and has kept us very busy. But we are back with new episodes starting today. So we hope that you all have been trying to stay safe in this pandemic. And as you know, Philippine NARS is a public service project of the Philippine Nurses Association of Nevada, or PNANV, in collaboration, of course, with our favorite radio station, PHLV Radio. Well, it is Christmas. It's the season for giving and helping others. Tis the season where everyone finds that inner good in themselves to give to others. As most of you have witnessed in this pandemic, our community has embraced the spirit of gift giving. We have given small and we have given big, but we have given. Today's Philippine Nars episode will tackle the ultimate gift that one can give to another person. That is the gift of life. And today, our guests, we, have, we do have very special guests that will talk about this gift of giving. And uh, one of them is my friend, Courtney Kaplan. Courtney, welcome, Ooh. Courtney. Thank you, thank you, Miss Doris. You're welcome. And uh, Courtney is the mom of uh, one of our organ donors, uh, Michael Siegler. Yes. Okay. And our next guest comes all the way from Texas. Our next guests, actually, Mary, you can sit there. Uh, Harold and Mary Peck. Welcome to the show, Harold. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Well, you are from a little town. Uh, is it a little town or a big town girl called Argyle, Texas? Is that correct? Yes, it's a small town. It's a small town, okay, and uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, you. You guys are two hours later, okay, right? <laughs> okay, well, welcome to the show. I appreciate uh, the both of you um, in coming over and talking about your story. Okay, so uh, let's give a little preview. Um, in May of 2019, Michael Sigler, otherwise known and we lovingly call Mikey lost his life in a tragic motorcycle accident only a week before he was to graduate high school. As a registered organ donor, UMC, which is uh, one of our local hospitals here in Las Vegas, the University Medical Center, was able to facilitate his organ donation with the help and the emotional decision from his family. UMC gave Mikey the first ever honor walk here in our community. Courtney Kaplan, Michael's mom, came to our podcast, Philippine Nars, in July of 2019 to talk about the importance of organ donation and to tell us Mikey's story, even if it was just still very raw to her because it was only a couple months after Mike Mickey's death. Anyway, she's back today, and she is going to continue to tell us Mikey's story. So welcome, welcome back. Thank uh, you. Courtney. Courtney. Thank you. Okay. So, um, Harold, I will get to you in a few minutes, but I'm going to ask Courtney. Uh, it's been a year and a half since uh, Mikey's tragic accident and tragic death. Yes. How have you and the family been? I will say, uh, Miss Doris, every day is... Um, is is a new day in my new life. I I certainly do not put any uh, requirements on my day. Um, I I do not know from one minute to the next 
um, how I might feel, what might, what might be a trigger, what might be a memory, which I absolutely love when those come. Uh, but I, I have, um, as a family, we are 100% supportive of each other and where we're at in our journey. Um, each of us um, have a different piece of the, of the, the loss and, and the absence. We, we all have a different relationship with Mikey mm -hmm. and uh, we, we mourn his loss and, and definitely um, feel his absence um, every day. Um, there's just so much good to this, so much good to the story, so much, so much mm -hmm. good from a tragedy. And that most cer certainly helps uh, me have a purpose and a passion every day to keep going. Um, I've got a, a fight to fight, and um, Michael's right alongside with me. So I, I appreciate any opportunity to uh, bring awareness. And thank you, thanks again for having me. That's beautiful, Courtney. Thank you. So um, how many organ or t tissue recipients uh, did Michael help, and how did that make you feel? Sure. Um, initially, uh, after the first week uh, that we had let Michael, um, Michael go uh, at UMC, we received uh, a very basic uh, correspondence from the uh, Nevada Donor Network with mm -hmm. from the aftercare specialist who shared um, the the breakdown of what organs went to to what age and what uh, sex orientation, whether it be male or female. Mm -hmm. um, at no time are we ever shared um, any personal information, any names, um, any locations as mm -hmm. to the state where this possibly, you know, the organ may have been um, right. being used. So at this point, uh, we have uh, both both kidneys were, were viable. Uh, so two separate individuals received the, uh, the kidneys. Um, the, or the lungs are treated as two organs. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, um, yeah, an individual did receive double lung. Mm -hmm. Um, the liver went to one individual, um, and all of his, um, his, his heart went to an 18 year old male. Oh. Uh, so that definitely, um, when, when the time is right for this young mm -hmm. man who, 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 whatever and however their story is, hopefully um they received my letter yeah. close to the same time and yeah. and can respond whenever it's time um but yeah we've got we've got um eight eight lives were saved wow. um due to uh michael's gift uh he had suffered a traumatic brain, brain injury uh which which um we we had you know had to deal with at the time however um uh, learning that we have eight additional family members and and several communities uh, more to add to our to our family is is quite an honor so that's great yeah. that's wonderful story now i know there is a suggested time before you can contact a donor's family or you know what what was that what what time factor was that and uh of course i'm pretty sure you wanted to contact the recipients absolutely right? oh absolutely the it, it's from what I can understand, since uh, Nevada does not have their own fully functioning transplant center and program uh, centered around transplants here, uh -huh. um, we are reliant upon the outlying transplant centers that you would find at Phoenix or Utah, Texas, mm -hmm. Arizona, and each of them seem to carry their own policy on um, the amount of time that they like to wait before. Um, they introduce a letter okay. to the to the recipients. Um, it, 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 is, it was my understanding at the gate that it could be anywhere from six months to a year, to a year. before the letter that I had written would, would get into the hands of uh, the individuals that, uh, you know, Michael now calls family. So Okay, so you were uh, given the uh, names of those people then uh, who were we the recipients? We were not. You no were names. Not. No names. We 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 continue um, even even now. Um, I am I am still not aware of any of the individuals first names, last names, and states that they are they are in uh -huh. now. Uh -huh. um, you know, only o only a couple um, have I been uh, alerted to. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, um, I I am still I I still do not know. Okay, so how 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 did you initiate the contact then, uh, and how was that? How, how, what was that process? Sure, sure. Um, so about September of 2019, I gave myself about four months to embrace 
what I could of my new life and, and, and just check in with myself and figure out how, how was I feeling? What was I feeling? Uh, and, and being very mindful not to judge it. Sure. These are, these are feelings. There are no expectations on them. There's no right. There's no wrong. Um, you, you certainly want to keep it within a, within a healthy, um, you know, sphere. However, um, it's not always possible. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you, you do the best with what you've got. Um, it, it was, it was one of those things. I sat down and started several letters yeah. and, um, and then once I just stepped back and just basically sat like I was in front of, you know, a, a, a best friend or something, I want to share with them. It, I want to somehow get across to you how extremely important you are to our family. How do I, how do I share that with you with, with not having, um, you know, giving you personal mm -hmm. information and not being able to see you? Yeah. How, how do I share that with you? Um, it took many attempts for me uh, with this letter. So you wrote a letter. I wrote a letter. Okay. Um, I felt that at least initially my gratitude and my honor for these individuals was not based on um, anything more than welcome to the family. Mm -hmm. um, there wasn't any, it, it's got to be the heart and the lungs, but not the liver, sure, or I don't sure. care if I hear from anybody else, but it has to be this one. It, I, I, I really needed to just let you know that you're loved and you're appreciated, okay. and please don't be scared. Don't be, don't feel guilty. Don't feel bad yeah. that we're in each other's lives now because, sure. because I don't. So can you read that letter? Do you have? Do you I have absolutely it with you? do. I would like to read that to you. Um, so it starts out, dear friend, it's been almost four months since both our lives were changed forever. Michael is and always will be my light, my love, my son. For many families that suffer the loss of a loved one, especially a child, one may understandably search for the reason why. Why me? Why my son or daughter? For me, I found my answer on May 22nd, 2019, and that answer is you. You gave my son Michael the rare opportunity to impact a life, not only your life, but the lives of your family, friends, and community. As Michael's mother, it is important for you to know how grateful I am that you are in my life. While I miss Michael's touch, his laugh, hearing his voice, and his incredibly dry humor. I am filled with gratitude and honor that he chose me to be his mom mm. and lead him on his path to you. Although this road to recovery you find yourself on is a long and bumpy road, one filled with high highs and perhaps some low lows, through it all, please know you are sharing the life of a soul filled with love and adventure, a love of nature and the gift of life and what it brings. A life that loved reptiles. Michael had a room full of them, snakes, lizards, geckos, tortoises, and the love of his life, Snickers the ball python. Mm. We kept Snickers as she holds a very special piece of Mikey. Mike, Mikey's equally special love was his motorcycle. Michael knew early on he was going to own and enjoy a motorcycle one that he bought and saved up for. When Mike wasn't riding outdoors or exploring, he was playing video games. He was another Fortnite fanatic. One of his many pleasures was hot French bread right off the shelf mm -hmm. and Oreos. Not together, of course. Many chew... Excuse me. Many chew... I'm sorry, many times he would indulge in orange chicken and white rice. Mm. One thing he always had going was his music. He enjoyed really anything. Anything from Marvin Gaye to Metallica. Mm. Chill Hop was his happy place. His favorite song is End of Summer by Cherokee. Take a listen, you may like it. I could go on for days sharing the life of Michael, and I will answer anything you may have, questions or Anything you want to know, I am an open book. My hope for you is you have found peace, love, and strength in knowing the life and struggle you may have had before is only a memory, a past that reminds you how precious life is and how valuable our loved ones are. 
You too are somebody's son or daughter. You deserve the opportunity to live your best life without the fear that your last breath, last heartbeat, or last embrace may be today. Lastly, please know I understand you must have a plethora of feelings and thoughts surrounding our relationship. I have no expectations or demands of you. My reaching out was for myself and Michael to welcome you to our family. I believe we all experience things in our lives that at times are painful and traumatic. I am no different. My path, however, has been forever changed, not in a bad way, in a way that has revealed my purpose, my path, and a purpose includes you, and it includes my son, Michael. Thank you for taking the time to read this letter. Despite the fear or sadness that may accompany our journey, I hope you find joy and happiness in each breath, each step, heartbeat, and smile. Find a smile and make up one day at a time. Light and love, Courtney. Wow, that is so beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. And so that letter was then disseminated to the recipients. That was yeah, sent correct. to, it, it is my understanding that they okay. were sent to the various transplant, transplant centers, centers where the individuals you know, mm -hmm. had received their transplant and follow-up care. That's beautiful. That's yes. beautiful. Thank you. Well, uh, Mr. Pack, Harold, welcome to the program. Uh, we do appreciate that you consented to be interviewed to tell your story um, uh, here at our program. Can you please tell us about yourself and how and why did you need a lung transplant? Um, we found out around 2010 I had some kind of a disease which was known as pulmonary fibrosis. Mm. which is a hardening of the lungs. I mean, I've never smoked or done anything like that to cause any damages. So they said it can be hereditary. So in 2010, the, the pulmonary fibrosis was pretty much dormant. We did, you know, lung function tests and stuff, and they were around 85%. So the doctor at that time said, we'll just monitor you for a few years or whatever time it takes. So in 2016, I got where I was having a little harder time breathing, so we went back to the doctor, and he set us up and went to get a biopsy. I asked the surgeon you know, how they want to do, and they said they wanted to do a biopsy, so they did a biopsy, and a week later, they come back and said that we did have pulmonary fibrosis, and um, so what they did at that time... Um, Put it in the list uh, like June, July the third, two thousand eighteen. So from from two thousand sixteen, I've just progressively would get a little worse and worse, and I started ha wearing a backpack for an oxygen. For oxygen, that was, yeah. uh huh. Mm -hmm. With my oxygen, and then in two thousand, like I said, in two thousand eighteen, that's when we end up was getting worse, and they actually end up putting us on the transplant list. Wow. And then we was on the list from, from July the 3rd, 2018 until we got, we ended up getting basically six calls. We were called six times for wow. lung transplant. And uh, Michael's was the last one. And so the first the first time we got a call, the, the donor had pneumonia in the lungs, so they, mm -hmm. they wouldn't use them. The mm -hmm. second time they found cancer in the donor's kidneys. The third wow. time had pneumonia. The fourth time um, the heart went hypertension and they gave it a bunch of medicine and ended up taking the lungs out. Oh. And then the fifth time the lungs were too big. And then the sixth time is when we got Michael's call, which was May the 21st of 2019. That must have been excruciating for you to get all those calls and, um, you know, and then to find out it wasn't really, you know, for you. It was more stressful on my wife, like the third time. She said, what is God doing? Why is he not giving us lungs? And I said, well, you know, he's got a plan. Oh. And when we get them, we get them. If we do, we do. If we don't, we don't. Yeah. We ended up getting basically the best you could ask for. So we're very grateful that, you know, we got what we got. And, you know, we hate 
Courtney lost her son, but we're really grateful for what we end up getting. Yeah, um, I just want to say have a shout out to Mary. Hi, Mary. I know yes. you're in there, <laughs> and thank you for allowing uh, Harold to come on here. <laughs> Hi, that's <laughs> Mrs. Mary Pack yes. right there, and uh, thank you for coming to the you know the program. Uh, so, uh, when did you get the call, uh, and how did that make you feel when you finally? realized that uh, you know michael was the donor that could give you that lung well you you really never know until then so like we got a call that evening we was actually at a hamburger joint eating a hamburger <laughs> and i asked him i said can i eat my hamburger because this one i know you're going to hold me over another day and they <laughs> said, yeah so we ate our hamburger and then like i said you go down there and they they get you start prepping you and giving you fluids and stuff and start taking blood samples and doing just a lot of different stuff. And then finally they, they come and get you. So, okay, we're going down at, at 10 o'clock or whatever. So it's, you don't know until you, it's like one time they actually put me in surgery, shaved my chest, was getting ready to cut my chest open. And that's when they found the donor had cancer. And it, oh, it, wow. They had already intubated me and was getting ready to cut me open. And at that point in time, they got a call to stop. We found cancer in the donor's kidneys. And so they woke me back up. And then, like I said, it was end up being, that was the second time. And then, like I said, it was the sixth time before we got my cancer. Yeah, so that was a hospital in, uh, you, you guys have a transplant coordination process over there in yeah, ours is Our hospital is UT Southwestern. Dallas UT Southwestern and the 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 surgeon was a, a, a doctor named Waite and the president of the donor of the organ transplant was a, a, a surgeon called Torres mm -hmm. and there is a great hospital from I mean from the janitors to the surgeons you could not ask for a better place to be the the people are just so caring and just it, it's a, it's hard to believe that they're that good and graceful and, and just it's it's amazing how great they are that's that's wonderful so mary how did you feel with that were you relieved when you uh how how did that how did that make you feel when you felt you was excited because we've been there five oh Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let Mary talk I'm for a minute. <laughs> oh, you got to talk loud. I can't hear. So. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mary, how did you feel, um, you know, when uh, this finally came, you know, right uh, in front of you? Excited every time. It was a roller coaster, you know, so many times going up and down there. So many times, but um, you, didn't, you didn't know originally he was getting a single. And somebody else was getting the other one, uh, and then on in the third floor, eleventh floor to the third floor, and we got off the elevator. They told him he was getting a double. Wow! Change, so change all the time. Yeah. So when we went there, it was going to be a single, and then time we got blood tests and all, and we went from like I said from the tenth of the eleventh floor to the third floor, and we come down. The nurse run up and said, "You're getting both of them." Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. So, how many liters of oxygen were you on at that point? I was to take a shower. I was using probably thirty liters of oxygen, and wow. I'd actually, when I got done taking a shower, I'd actually have to grab another bottle. I was on forty-five liters for a, for five or ten minutes, and I'd catch my breath, and then. I would let that one go, and then I'd rest for another fifteen or twenty minutes. And we were we were on fifteen liters pretty much continuous. Oh all my the goodness! Time. Oh from my goodness! February, from February to May, he had gone downhill really, really fast. So he had oxygen in his mouth, up his nose. He had two concentrators put together. Oh wow! Uh, had a hard time just to get from the couch to the shower. Mm -hmm. mm. All right. Oh wow. Well, so when after surgery, 
after his surgery, immediately when we got to see him, his color was completely back. Wow. It was just totally amazing. That's amazing. That's amazing. So can you tell us about your recovery process? Uh, what was the outcome for you and your family? Well, like I said, so we went in, they had us intensive care for two days. So I was basically unconscious the first, for the first two days. The third day they woke us, woke me up. And then I actually got up and walked. I walked the third day. Wow. And I walked like 13 or 1400 feet the first day. And then we walked more and more the second day, the third day. And so on, you know, the third, fourth, fifth day. And actually we went home in eight days. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. Oh, my they goodness. Said they, they said they've never had anybody go home in eight, and I would have went home in seven, but they wouldn't let me leave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, so how did you get in contact with Courtney? Uh, how was that process? How did you get the letter and whatnot? So Okay, so our um, coordinator at the hospital... Um, she, I was actually working, I'd, I'd already had my lung transplant, and, and I was actually just in the job site working, running a piece of equipment, and she called and said, okay, we got a letter from the donor's family, uh, do you want us to send it to you? And I said, absolutely, yes. And she said, well, what we'll do is we'll email you a copy, and then we'll send you the original copy through the mail, so you can get the, the email today. So I called my wife and told her <clears throat> that um, she called and she sent an email and I said, do not read the email until I get home. <laughs> so I got home and um, Courtney had sent the letter for roughly four months after Michael's passing. Mm -hmm. And it took, it took like September. September, I think, August fourth. Uh huh. That's the day that Mallory reached out. August fourth. Yeah. So yeah. we we got the letter September, whichever day it was. I don't remember the exact day, but we read the letter, and Courtney put enough information in there that I could kind of read between the lines. <laughs> and in my daughter-in-law, Mallory, I said, "Look on the computer and see what you can kind of find up." Find <laughs> What a good detective know, Mallory is. Fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> so Mallory was able to locate and see the uh, Walk of Honor and uh, just a bunch of other stuff. And then Mallory, I, I guess on Facebook, sent her saying that I'm Harold Peck. I was the donor, the, the uh, recipient of the lungs. Oh. And this is the phone number if you want to call him. And then uh, Charles would support me. Husband, yeah. called and said, is this Harold Peck? And said, yeah, we're going with a double lung transplant. And so we could, I could hear Courtney in the back. She was emotional. She was excited. Yeah. And we were excited and emotional, too. And um, so we talked for about an hour and a half. Yes, we did. And then uh, I asked them, would they like to meet us? And they said, yeah. So they come down and seen us um, October the 16th and they were here the 16th 17th and 18th yes yes uh, she i was so excited when um when courtney told me that i'm like oh my god can i just be a fly on the wall when you go over there <laughs> but um i am so uh you know so glad so anyway uh yes um courtney and hubby uh did make it over there to argyle texas and so, tell us what happened when both your families met. Courtney, you want to start? Sure. Um, I mean, of course, besides the obvious butterflies and and what was I feeling? I know I was excited. I wasn't scared. I, I wasn't fearful. I wasn't sad. It, it's just one of those emotions. Like, how, I don't think you really experience it, it exactly like that and, unless you're in it because it, where else in life would you like I mean unless it was maybe a birth parent or mother that kind of excitement of I don't know you but I know you and I'm so excited um, I mean it, it was it, this was literally a dream come true mm. having made a full circle 
just barely a year ago, you know, mm-hmm. having left my son at the operating room and and to see, you know, once that seed was planted, if you will, and to see what's grown and, and just having this opportunity to um, reunite with, with a part of Michael again mm-hmm. and, and also experience... Uh, what what life did Harold have going and 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 what how could Michael help in in that and just w- watching that beauty and watching that symbiotic relationship happen right before my eyes is it, it's there's just really no words I I do remember um, texting Harold and like you know what kind of car are you in because we were you know we were sitting in a passenger pickup type of a situation in mm-hmm, Texas mm-hmm. and uh you know described the vehicle and and I saw it in the horizon and I just I, I started my, my breathing increased I mean my hands were sweaty I go this is it this is it like this this buildup was just crazy and when he parked and and Miss Mary hopped out and I just I gave her the biggest I love you person, whoever you are, I love you hug. And, um, and then Harold came from the passenger, I'm sorry, the driver's side and came around the vehicle. And it it was for, for me, it was, um, it, it, it was reuniting with, with that part, um, that, that a mother would, would, experience in the womb the the yeah. fluttering heart and just the lung and just the movement that uh that you 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 already connect with your baby before you've ever met them i bet. I, yeah. I i felt that michael was there and 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 i could feel him like his uh, there was a piece of him there that i could hold again so um i i'm pretty sure i probably cracked a rib um <laughs> i probably did the oh uh, with harold so um Sorry about that. Send me the bill. Um, but yes, I um, that it, it was an immediate and it was immediate connection for, for me for sure. And um, I, I can only imagine, you know, what the experience was like yeah. for, for Miss Mary and Harold. So Harold, uh, how did you feel uh, when when you both when both your families met? I mean, it, it was uh, exciting and, and it was an emotional. I mean. We knew at that time, you know, Michael was only 18 years old, and, and yeah. I have a son also. And, you know, I, I, I looked at how she would feel by losing her son, and, and I was, you know, looked at the same way if I'd lost mine or whatever. So it was a, it was a real emotional, real excited moment for, for me and my family, and, and we're very grateful for the gift that we got. Yeah. How about you, Miss Mary? Uh, it was it was emotional. You just immediately start crying and <laughs> oh, we can hear you very well. Uh, I think we lost some audio on you, but that's okay. There we go. Yeah. All right. Okay, um, it seems we lost a little bit of audio from you guys. Uh, so let me see. So what kind of activities did you plan uh, when, uh, when you guys met? I know uh, they made the trek to, uh, to uh, uh, Texas. Courtney? Um, sure. Um, the only, I'm getting all the information that um, Mikey's dad and I had was, um, you know, Mr. and Mr. Harold and Mary Peck, and we lived in Argyle, and we didn't know anything more than that, um, except that when we were speaking with each other initially after we first made contact on the um, with through through Facebook, um, I mentioned to Harold and his family that Michael's birthday would be coming up. Mm-hmm. He'll be turning twenty on October seventeenth, mm. and it would truly be an honor for us to. Uh, spend Michael's birthday with with Harold and share 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 Michael with with him as he would be sharing Michael with me on his twentieth birthday. Uh, so so we did absolutely spend uh, Michael's birthday with Harold and his family. Uh, we were we were welcomed to um, several family members um, between uh, Miss Mary and Harold um, had flown in uh, for this occasion. Um, it, it it was it was absolutely overwhelming the love and the appreciation and yeah. and i and i i'm confident that they felt the same uh you know from us that we are truly grateful that they are in our lives um now now and forever 
That is um, wonderful. We had um, just wonderful fire pit stories and, and just bonding time and tears and laughter. And um, it, 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 was, it was one of those once in a life once in a lifetime experiences. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, Harold and uh, Mary, how how did you guys uh, feel about that reunion and the activities that you planned? That must have been awesome. Yeah, it was cool. Like I said, we we like cooking out. Brandon likes my son. He likes cooking, so we you know we cooked out the first day and we cooked out on the 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 seventeenth. And, you know, we had, my sister was there and Brandon and his wife, and we had several friends over that wanted to meet mm-hmm. Courtney and Charles. And, and um, we actually had birthday cakes. Oh. And, then, and then my son is real emotional as well as I am at times. I'm more of a hard nose most of the time, but <laughs> he, actually, he actually bought balloons and, had balloons and had happy birthday michael on it and then he handed out letters or pieces of paper for everybody to write something to michael mm-hmm. and then he tied them on the stringers of the balloons and then we we all brandon and i and charles and court we all walked out and yeah. walked out the and then let beautiful. the balloons up in there and we it, actually- it was a real emotional yeah. Most we actually have a video of that, I, I, and I know that when you all met, you planned something like that, and it was around Michael's birthday, so that was pretty special for, you know, both families, and he would have been 20 years old at the time, and um, I know you celebrated that special day with, you know, sh- you know, releasing balloons up in the air, so... I'm going to let you let the listeners and the viewers see that video. 
It sure is. That's amazing. I... Okay, that was so good. That was so good. Thank you for sharing that, Courtney. Sure. And, um, you know, very emotional time. So, uh, to the three of you, uh, your, both of your families are connected forever. Is there any message, a special message that you want to give out to our listeners and to whomever? Uh, is listening and viewing this podcast about your gift of life and the gift that you received, Harold? Um, I, I, I think donation, being an organ donor, is, is probably one of the most precious gifts that you could ever give somebody. Um, it's like us. I mean, I was, I was probably within 60 days of dying. Um, wow. and, and by getting the lung transplant, it's like it's been over a year and a half and my activities are back to exactly where I was. I get to do pretty much whatever that I get to do. And, and, and like I said, it's just a precious gift to, to organ donate. And I, I think it's um, something that everybody ought to think about. Mm -hmm. That's that's wonderful, Mary. What what do you what can you say? What do you want to say? Oh, uh, definitely uh, change people's lives in the best way. Mm -hmm. uh, um, it's so it's just so important. People just don't have any idea how important it is, and and. Um, it's like giving you a second lease in life, yeah, right? Exactly. And like Harold got to see uh, our son get married in December. Oh. And yeah, just, you, you have no idea how important it is. Oh, my goodness. What, what about you, uh, Courtney? What is your message? Um, for sure, uh, being an organ donor... Um, is I, I believe is is a is a right and a privilege just as driving it is something that we um, take for granted but it's it is so absolutely necessary um, it is for the betterment of of not only yourselves but your family and for others um, you, you just absolutely never know who your hero will be and um, you know taking that taking that to work with you or taking that out in public and just really, really realizing that, um, you know, we all have a choice on how we, um, how we deal with things. Um, we're going to, we're going to be faced with negative and difficult and challenging things, um, all the time and really how you, how you choose to deal with it will, will determine, um, 
will determine the outcome. We determine everything. It'll, it'll, you will be able to find the silver lining. You'll be able to find peace. Um, that again is, is a choice that we all make and how we, how we want to live our lives and, um, and, and, and realizing that heroes are ordinary people doing extraordinary things and, Mm -hmm. and not just with organ donation, but, but really any, any passion and purpose that, that you found yourself in, um, you know, use that 80% 80% of what you've learned to do, use it for the betterment of others and, and um, you know, do it with a smile because you just never know. You just never know what an impact you have on others. Wow. Well, I really would like to thank you guys on behalf of Philippine NARS and PHLV Radio. I would like to thank all of you for coming to the podcast and what a heartwarming story that you all have told us and our listeners. The ultimate gift is the gift of life. And this is a heartwarming story that you have told us on Christmas Day. So thank you so much, Mr. and Mrs. Pack and Courtney. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank the next time we see Courtney, we're going to have a big party because this was COVID. Oh, yeah. yeah. This was a COVID party. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. A lot yes. Of there and it can be exciting. Oh, for sure. That's wonderful. That's yes, right. that's great. Hey, I'm coming. <laughs> I didn't learn that. <laughs> Don't say that because you will. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you again. And uh, to our listeners and to our viewers, we hope that we have brought you a story to warm your hearts this season. Like while Ralph Waldo Emerson said, The only gift is a portion of thyself. And this is truly the ultimate gift that we can give is the gift of life. Let me also share with you some excerpts from a hymn by Reverend Henry Burton. And it's called, Have You Had Kindness Shown? And it says, Have you had a kindness shown? T'was not given for thee alone. Let it travel down the years, let it wipe another's tears, till in heaven the deed appears, pass it on, pass it on. Did you hear that loving word, like the singing of a bird? Let its music live and grow, let it cheer another's voice. You have reaped what others sow, pass it on, pass it on. Hold your lighted lamp on high, be a star on someone's sky. May he live who else would die. Pass it on, pass it on. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Doris Bauer, your Philippine nurse host, signing off for now. The Philippine Nurses Association of Nevada has just brought you Philippine Nars. News and features about the Filipino-American nursing community and beyond on PHLV Radio.